Hey guys, John here today. I am over here on this property collecting some moss and some little resurrection ferns that I want to use today in a build out that I'm going to do. Uh, I plan on doing an 18 by 18 by 24 build out um, Exoterra and I need to collect this little moss and I want to collect some of these resurrection ferns um, and I know this is a great place to do it because there's no pesticides used on this land so I'm gonna go ahead and get some and then I'm going to go clean them up bring them home and I'm gonna show you what I get all right guys I'm gonna get to it all right guys so I just got home uh, finished washing and cleaning all of the uh, mosses and stuff we collected so this is what I got right here it's um let me turn y'all around real quick it's um different moss and these little ferns I was saying the resurrection ferns these were off of um the trees they just they grow in the bark and they peel off pretty easy so I got a lot of this good moss and I got these little ferns and um you know, I cleaned them, I just washed them and put them in these trays. They're sitting here with all of my bromeliads that I've slowly been collecting because, you know, I'm building a frog room and you can never have too many plants. And um, even if you weren't building a frog room, you can still never have too many plants. Um, these are just temporary in boxes. I water them, they get afternoon sun. Or actually, no sun, they just get like indirect sun. But so this is what I collected, and uh, it looks pretty good. And hopefully they'll all do really good in uh, in the terrariums. Um, the uh, different types of moss, a couple of different types. I think all the ferns are the same. I'm not too sure. There's there's some. I think this is lichens. Um, different bark family used to. I found that the the ferns were in a different type of moss than the moss on the ground, and then there was another moss too. Um, but yeah, so we're just going to go in here, um, that's my frog room in there, and um, I'm actually building out the frog room, waiting for the rest of the eggs to uh, arrive, but we are going to be building out the ones that I do have, which are right up there. So I already start the build, uh, I am filming it as we go, and um, I'm going to go ahead and put a a uh, video together of me building this uh, now. Okay, so I started off by putting the clay balls in the bottom. The This is hydro, um, hydro clay balls. Um, they're used in aquaponics and they make a great false bottom layer. This is the larger ones. I used the larger marbles here so that they wouldn't go down my drain pipe. I had smaller ones too, but chose not to use them. After that, I covered them up with landscape fabric. Um, you do that so that your dirt won't get mixed into it. The clay balls are about three, four inches deep. That way, the water will go down the drain. It won't ever actually touch my, my dirt. After that, I start to place my wood in. Um, this is the first time I've done a build in a very long time, so uh, probably you know six years before I actually did a build build. The last time I was in frogs was very short and it was really just quick basic setups. So I uh, tried different designs before I decided to pick my final thing and uh, I liked how it just kind of sat natural. I know I had to wedge a couple clay marbles in there to get sit before I foamed it. The background is actually the original background from Exoterra. I used that foam and I, uh, I glued uh, some wicking material. Uh, Hydro Grow uh, onto the back just using silicone and then in case the silicone failed I pinned it in place with some aluminum wire made for bonsai trees that's that's coated in black it's uh it's I forget what the process is called but it's black and it won't come off and it won't corrode uh, the sides are blacked out with black vinyl I don't like foaming the sides or anything I like having my sides clean so I can clean them up make them look good that's just me but so the woods in place, I went ahead and used black foam from Great Stuff. This is made for the ponds and things. Uh, I choose black just because if you miss painting it or something, it uh, you know, you can't see it really. So it, it's a good, good thing to do. It's a few dollars more, but black is a better base than the yellow in my opinion. So that's really just up to you and what you can find and what you can get. After I uh, foamed it in there, I had to leave it dry for a day. 
or half a day before I can go in there and start carving on it. And uh, I don't actually carve with a knife. I find when you carve with a knife, it leaves very uh, unnatural edges, very, you know, sharp edges. You can see it's been carved. So I like to just peel the foam with hand, get all the glossy areas off, get all the excess foam off. And by peeling it by hand, it gives you a more organic look, leaves those pores open to give it a more textured look. And uh, I just, I like that better. I know it's harder, but uh, I like it better. Now, I did see people were starting to use like wire brush drills and stuff. I thought about trying that with a Dremel tool on my next one, but uh, I, I just, I like how this is and you know, I don't really change things up too much, I find. So I'll probably stick with just hand peeling it. After I uh, hand peeled it, I went with the, method of dry lock painting and uh that's something new to me uh i think it was troy who started that online and uh he uh did some really nice builds with it i saw some of his build videos and said now i'm gonna try that too so i used to always just use the silicone and fiber method but uh this time i went with the uh the dry lock and i, I stained it brown originally and uh used a a powder stain and it looked really good it almost matched the wood perfect I was really happy with it decided I want to do a little bit darker though uh, I used the powder black and as I was painting with it it started to turn darker and darker and darker so the second coat came out a lot darker almost as black as the original foam was and I didn't want to use three coats so I kind of just went with it I figured I was going to cover up 90% of it with plants anyhow, and uh, I thought it looked pretty good. So it took a little while to dry, but after that, we start to uh, put in our substrate. Now, as I put it in the substrate, I went back, I filled in with some more of that uh, substrate barrier, that the, uh, the garden soil barrier, to make sure that it wasn't going to go around it. So I got all the edges nice and tight. Um, the substrate I used for this was actually reptile soil from Zoo Med. I kind of liked it the best out of all the different ones I could choose from. And I didn't really want to make my own. I had the components to make my own, but I liked this one enough. It was, it was pretty much close to what I wanted. It drains really well, so I, I went with it. And I made sure I get behind all of the foam that uh, I pulled it away from the wall a little bit because I knew if I didn't get behind, a frog could get trapped back there. So I pulled it away from the wall and the glass a little bit and packed a lot of soil behind it to make sure that a frog couldn't get back there and get trapped at all. You always want to be careful and mindful of anywhere that the frogs can get. So the soil went in and then a little bit of cork bark went in just to give it a little bit of contrast. And then I start placing all that collected moss and ferns. Now I want to apologize, you can't see the front of the tank and you can't see the top of the tank once I start doing this. I didn't realize that the GoPro was not getting everything until after I took it off of the tank and put the film into the computer. Uh, so you're going to miss a couple of the plants while I'm doing this, but uh, you'll see majority of what I did and I'll explain what I was doing. But this is all that ground layer of moss. So I made a nice ground layer of moss. Uh, put some ferns around the wood, put a couple of ferns in different places on the ground just to make it look more natural because you're never going to have isolated plants in one spot in the wild. I mean, you can, but very rarely does it happen like that. So I try to mix up a little bit of the same plant all over the tank and the, the same mosses all over the tank. Um, I come back later and add leaf litter. The leaf litter is very important too. Even though I put all the moss in the front, I need leaf litter for the small uh, babies and the different um, bugs and things that will live. But I don't like seeing leaf litter, so I made sure there was a cavity in the back to place a lot of leaf litter. What I'm doing here is I pinned some ferns that had some bark and moss on it to the background with super glue. I'm using glue that's made for the coral hobby. Uh, and then with the super glue, I also use some toothpicks just to hold everything in place. And then I put some rabbit fern at the bottom also. Zip tied my bromeliads in place. 
I like using zip ties because they're not going to corrode. They're very strong. You can use two zip ties and an X pattern to hold the plants exactly where you want them. And then um, you don't really have to worry about the roots or anything. They'll just grow around the zip ties. And then if you ever have to remove them, you just clip the zip ties and pull them out. Now to hide the zip ties, you'll see here in a little bit that after I get the other plants in here, I come back and I glue moss to the zip ties. I don't glue the moss to the actual plant itself because you'll rot the plant out. I just glue it in front of it to the zip tie. That way there's a little barrier for the plant to breathe. You don't want to rot that base out. So you just want to be careful of that. Anywhere you put your bromeliads, if it gets too much water on the base and can't breathe because uh, of moss or anything, it's just going to rot and fall apart. I used to do this method in my old tanks and I had great success. And I would get a tennis ball size of roots just hanging down and bromeliad pups would be growing out of it. And uh, I lost very few plants doing it this way. So I'm hoping it does it good, again, as good as it used to. Uh, I used to hand mist, now I'll have the mist king on this and I'm hoping it doesn't overwater. Now you'll see that bromeliad was not really sitting how I wanted it to, so I used some pieces of cork bark to just wedge it to hold it up against that zip tie. That little bit of cork bark will really go a long way and it won't retain water so it won't rot the plant either. So I put in some more ferns back in that cavity um, and then I put in this other plant, this one right here. I have no clue what that is. That's the first time I've ever seen it. I was at Home Depot, or actually I was at Lowe's and it was on the rack and I was like, huh, that looks pretty cool. Let's just try it. So I stuck it in there. It's in a little bit darker spot than I like, but we'll see what happens. I didn't want to put it out in the open. I want to keep that foreground pretty clear in case any um, babies would come out into it. We could see it. And then I just added a little bit of leaf uh, litter in the front just for, you know, decoration. So here you can see me gluing that moss in place. Or actually, I'm sorry, that's not the moss. That's uh, some orchids. I did get some small miniature orchids. I glued them all over the different uh, branches. And uh, I think they'll do pretty good where I put them. But again, the same thing. I'm attaching them with super glue. This is safe for the plants. It won't hurt them. The roots will grow around the glue. And uh, I've done this before and I was very successful with it. And then to hide the uh, zip ties, now I'm gluing the moss to it. And uh, it really didn't matter if I did there or not because eventually the roots would hide the zip ties and they're black zip ties so you don't really see them anyhow but I didn't want to see them at all. My idea was to do all this and then let the tank grow in for two or three months before I actually put any frogs in there. You can see the brand of glue I'm using. It's CG from Ecotech Marine. It's really just a really thick super glue. You can use any super glue, crazy, crazy glue, anything like that. Don't use Gorilla Glue. That's actually not um, the same thing. It's actually a type of foam, and I think it is toxic to plants. Uh, and it takes a long time to dry. But uh, I put a few pieces of moss down uh, here first before I put a uh, trailing vine on it. That way the vine would have wet moss to sit on and put its roots through just in case that branch would dry out too much. Um, I've actually never kept this type of vine before. I forget what they're called, but they're very popular now in the hobby. And uh, I heard that if they sit on anything dry, that they pretty much dry up and die. So I wanted to put moss down first because I knew it would stay wet enough to give it a root structure or housing for a root structure. And then in the very end, I also come back with some monkey pods that I put up in the front. I really like how they look aesthetic-wise. 
But the other reason I use the monkey pods is that's where I pour my fruit flies. It catches all the powder uh, that you powder coat the fruit flies with. Uh, you don't want that powder on your plants. I find it kills most plants over time. So you can pull that monkey pot out and rinse it and it makes it look good and stays looking good. Uh, and then what you see me doing there with my fingers is I'm actually putting in seeds of baby tears and stuff. It will grow in in patches and look really good, really natural. I kind of just threw it everywhere. Also on the background, you can see at the top, there was like dirt. That dirt was uh, moss spores. I'm hoping to get moss growing all over that background. So this was the build. Pretty simple. I really was happy with it. I think it looks really good at nighttime with the, the moonlights on. It looks amazing. That's my favorite type of viewing it. And I'm hoping it grows in really well and the frogs are really happy. So guys, subscribe and keep an eye out for more videos. Keep watching guys. I'm going to make update videos on this, how the plants do and everything. I had a lot of fun building it. I'm having just as much fun building it as I am looking for getting new frogs and things. So subscribe and please follow us. See y'all soon and thanks for watching. Bye.